السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی آف مارکیٹنگ فار نان پرافٹس ایم کے ٹی سیون ٹو ایٹ ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دس کمپوننٹ آف لرننگ از گوئنگ ٹو بی اباؤٹ دی پروسیس فار ڈیولپنگ نیو آفرنگس دا فیکٹ از دیٹ آئی آلریڈی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دس پروسیس اینڈ ڈیوائڈیڈ دی اوور آل کمپوننٹ ان ٹو ٹو سب کمپوننٹس ون اسٹینڈنگ فار دی کنسیپچل سائڈ اینڈ دا ادر اسٹینڈنگ فار دی ڈیولپمنٹ سائڈ The conceptual side already has been taken care of by the byway of talking about idea generation and screening of different ideas in order to come up with the most optimal and the most promising, which really can be translated into meaningful consumer terms. So we are now down to the development side. And uh, with that, I'm going to start talking about the concept development, which will take us into the uh, concept testing stage and with which then could will translate into strategy formulation with the meaning marketing strategy formulation and then testing of the product not the concept and then the actual launch and that will culminate the strategic process for development of new offerings so let us start uh, talking about the concept development as the terminology suggests This is something which has been translated from the idea that could be generated and could be stuck with because we thought it really has been the best possible idea which has to be translated into a concept. So concept basically is a translation of the idea by putting together all its characteristics and features. It basically is a construct. So we have to come up with this construct Uh, in a way that uh, it really reflects what the consumer or our client wants. And that is why we say that we have to translate the idea into a concept. Once it is translated into the concept, then we have to see to it that we take care of all the dimensions that are absolutely essential in order to give them a real consumer meaning. And what are those dimensions? Well, they are different parts of the marketing strategic process. And um, starting with the product itself, the kind of need it addresses, and uh, then the kind of volume it is going to generate, the target market it is going to um, reach, and uh, the response of the target market, and therefore the kind of volume that the program or the product will generate. The pricing pattern and the distribution setup in case it has a social program, if it happens to be kind of a one side dispensary or hospital or a university, it is something else. But there are so many different dimensions that have to be taken into consideration before we really translate the idea into a good concept. I would like to take you back to the example of uh, the PSRD, where you know, I talked about so many different departments and sections uh, by way of their uh, reflecting different products or different programs. And I think you will agree with me that uh, all the sections like uh, the physiotherapy or occupational and uh, speech therapy, um, skill development center, where they uh, prepare people uh, with uh, computer Uh, deficiencies and uh, things like stretching and sewing and so on and so forth. So many different things which uh, may be um, wide apart from the core product, but having a very close link with each other uh, by way of reflecting the same uh, the target market, it um, is something which reflects a beautiful concept or a combination of 
concepts, a bunch of concepts that must have been taken into consideration before those sections or those departments or those programs were initiated and then made a success. So that's about the development of a concept which basically is a translation of a good idea. But do not forget the fact that uh, the idea has to be uh, finalized after screening out all the thoughts and thought processes that might occur at various levels of the organization and uh, then it should be left to the choice of the committee that is uh, responsible to screen uh, get all the ideas and then come up with the most optimal one. After uh, we have uh, developed the concept, of course, uh, we get on to the next stage, uh, which is concept testing. Concept testing is uh, all about testing the concept uh, with the uh, target audience. So in other words, uh, we have to ensure that the concept that we have developed finds a fairly decent level of acceptance among the members of the target audience. And the question here is, how do we go ahead with that? Well, keep one thing in mind that we have not yet reached the stage of product development. We still are into the conceptual stage and moving step by step into the developmental process. And therefore, the concept has to be tested with the target audience, not the product. So in order to test the concept, we try to reach a certain section of the target audience, which we think is going to be the most promising in terms of giving us proper, accurate, and objective responses. In order to generate those responses, we have to come up with some beautifully structured questionnaires. And these questionnaires have to carry questions which reflect all those dimensions that I talked about as part of the concept development stage. So we take into consideration all those dimensions and prepare our questionnaires in absolute clarity so that the target audience has a chance to come up with the right answers. If we do not ask the right questions, we will not get the right answers. Uh, because it is the same concept as uh, garbage in and garbage out. So we have to put in something sensible in order to get something sensible back. These uh, the questions that uh, generate accurate answers will be the ones that uh, will form the basis for the management to take the right decision about uh, the right kind of product with the right features and dimensions. There could be there's so many different kinds of uh, the questions that uh, we may ask as the part of the questionnaire or a set of questionnaires depending on the program and the product that we are uh, developing. But just in order to generalize, I would like to pinpoint uh, a few of those which uh, we have to ask in any case. First of all, we have to ask the formative question to our target audience, whether they fully understand the features of the program or not. If they do not understand the product in total clarity, there is something wrong with the concept development and we have to go back to the concept development stage. Or if we realize that we need to go back even further, uh, then we must do that. Um, maybe, you know, the um, screening process because it was not very uh, pragmatically done. Uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, drop error or go error. So this is just the one example of uh, making sure that uh, the question that we ask has to uh, be very clear in terms of uh, the basic nature and characteristic of the product. So in other words, our target audience they must understand what the product or the program is all about. Their clarity of the product is going to ensure the success of the product. The next question that we may ask our target audience could be, if that is the case, then what kind of need you think this program or this product is going to address? If the answer reflects a level of satisfaction on part of the target audience that uh, the organization's program will address a very genuine need, then we are on the right track. 
Another question that uh, the organization could may ask is, uh, will you come to this particular organization in order to satisfy this particular need that you think can be satisfied by our offering? If the answer is yes, you should uh, be very confident about the um, efficacy of uh, your program. Uh, it is uh, going to be based on certain solid rationale which you uh, thought was the right one to begin with. Uh, you may also uh, ask them about their uh, other expectations uh, from uh, the program. If they think there are uh, certain dimensions that uh, have not been taken into consideration, then you must note those down. And by the same token, you must ask them things like, uh, what are the improvements or uh, possible improvements uh, which they think should be uh, brought about? Are they satisfied with the kind of uh, the pricing structure that we are uh, talking about? The pricing objectives that we envisage? Uh, of course, could you ask these kind of questions in a very subtle way, but uh, uh, there has to be some kind of mechanism in order to ensure that uh, you as an organization are on the right track in terms of consideration of all the strategic dimensions important uh, to put together um, in order to come up with the right offering. You may also ask them uh, the question about the, uh, the distribution strategy which you have in place. And uh, then uh, one of the most important questions that uh, should be kind of uh, the last question should be, or rather must be, will you really come to this organization to satisfy this particular need? It is not the 100% uh, possible to expect um, very honest responses from all the respondents, but the, but the chances are the people will be uh, quite honest and objective uh, in responding to th this particular question. And this happens to be one of the most important questions or probably the most important question because this will become the basis of your projections in terms of the volumes that you may envisage selling and generating. And when we talk about that is related to so many different things, in particular, your the pricing and the revenue model. So therefore, it happens to be the most important question. Once you have tested the concept, then the next natural and logical stage is the formulation of the marketing strategy. This stage is all about coming up with a campaign plan. And the campaign planning is uh, like uh, a, a business plan. And we are all uh, very familiar with uh, all the steps of uh, a business plan, or for that matter, a marketing plan. Um, let us uh, pay attention more uh, on the aspects of uh, a the marketing plan instead of a business plan, which could be about the whole business. Here, we are talking about just the one offering, which is going to be a new offering. And therefore, all the dimensions that we consider in terms of this um, uh, particular development has to be centered on that particular offering that is in focus. So given the focal uh, program or the product, we go ahead with uh, the formulation of uh, the marketing strategies, which again is a combination of uh, all these strategic dimensions that I talked about as part of concept development and uh, the concept testing. The additional thing which uh, this uh, campaign planning uh, will uh, constitute is the cost and revenue model. So in other words, in addition to all the strategic dimension of the new offering, uh, we have to work out uh, what exactly is going to be the cost of development of uh, this particular product and uh, what is going to be the revenue model. The revenue model, of course, is going to be a function of uh, the pricing um, strategy, which in turn is a function of our pricing objectives. So depending on whether it is going to be a premium uh, pricing strategy or a strategy which is just about good enough to recover our operational cost and uh, leaving the rest uh, for uh, uh, donations uh, to fulfill the gap, uh, we go ahead with uh, this particular revenue model. But talking about the, uh, the market or marketing planning very logically, let me narrate different steps with which this planning process will entail. The fact is that the campaign, the marketing planning, consists of uh, so many different parts. 
starting with uh, the mission of the organization because the flows out of this particular mission, yet another product which we are trying to develop either as an extension of the existing product or a whole new product, meaning a whole new program which may be linked and related to the existing product or are in the process of developing something which is absolutely different from what we have been doing in the past, but still remains very closely linked uh, with our uh, reason for being because we are addressing uh, the same target market or a very closely related target market. So therefore, they start with uh, the, the mission of the, the organization and then talk about our reason for being. Our reason for being talks about the purpose of the organization. It means why we exist. And then could we get down to the things like uh, the marketing strategy. Now, this strategy statement of the marketing uh, planning for this particular campaign uh, it should not be the more than a couple of sentences explaining the game plan for the program that uh, could we envisage developing. Once could we have the strategy in place, of course, could we talk about the need this strategy is going to fulfill. And if we have uh, taken into consideration very objectively all the dimensions, then we shall talk about the right need to be addressed. We already have tested the concept and therefore we must write as uh, uh, to how this strategy is going to fulfill the need again in just about the one or two sentences. If it takes us longer than that, then we must start questioning ourselves about our own clarity of the particular concept that we have developed we have tested already and we are strategizing and we are putting together so many different dimensions in order to complete the developmental process. Once we have done that, we are down to things like what is the size of the market, meaning what is the size of the target audience that we are trying to reach. And we must also talk about the most promising sections of that particular segment. If we think that the segment has to be subdivided into the sub-segments, we should do that. And if we think that one particular program that we are developing is going to take care of all those sub-segments, fine. Or if we think that we are going to make certain um, subtle um, uh, differentiations among uh, the different uh, the features of the same product, we should do that. Uh, but uh, Keeping focus on the new product as the one monolithic product, one entity that we are developing, we talk about the target audience, the size of that target audience, and we start talking about the projections that we think are the realistic ones. And remember the very last question that we asked as part of concept testing Will you really come to our organization to fulfill this particular need? And that is going to be a very good basis of uh, your uh, the marketing research because uh, that uh, will be the basis of your projections. Apart from your uh, experiential cash that you have as uh, the part of the history of the organization, if the organization happens to be uh, an established organization like the, uh, the one I just talked about um, as PSRD. So you uh, should be in a position to uh, put together your uh, the projections, meaning uh, share of the pie which you think you will get by um, attracting certain portions of the total target audience. And once we have done that, then uh, the other dimensions that uh, the need to be considered are things like uh, the pricing uh, the patterns or the pricing model. And I think uh, that we already have uh, the learned quite a bit about the fundamentals, starting with pricing objectives and uh, the then doing some numbers in terms of uh, the what really is going to be the, um, the costs and um, revenues that will be generated uh, by um, taking into consideration all those costs and uh, the pricing model. Because once could we have uh, these uh, uh, costs and uh, the pricing workings could with us, could we are all set to go ahead with further analysis. But uh, 
In addition to that, we also have to talk about the distribution strategy. And uh, I think it goes without saying, if it is a social program and it is going to be something which is going to be all over the country, it is a national campaign. If it happens to be just one particular site, uh, in case of a hospital or a university or a dispensary, which is a single site entity, then of course we talk about the distribution accordingly. And um, in that context, of course, we talk about um, dispersing um, services uh, to our clients uh, at the site where we exist. However, if it is a question of um, things like uh, family planning or uh, a polio campaign or uh, the anti-dengue campaign and, and so on and so forth, we have to take into consideration all the dimensions of distribution. And uh, we have to be very sensitive to the fact uh, that what uh, could be other associated products that should be tagged uh, the, as part of the total program. Uh, the, as you know, there, uh, there could be different products that are uh, the sold as part of the family planning program. And uh, the same is the case uh, with uh, the uh, rehydration programs. Of course, the, the product happens to be just one, but there could be uh, different uh, the brands and uh, the different flavors and uh, the different uh, sets of uh, the wholesalers and distributors. So you have to pay attention to all these dimensions as uh, the part of the campaign planning because uh, the, what I'm talking about are um, basically uh, the parts of a holistic uh, marketing strategic process. And uh, this process also takes into consideration all the variables of marketing mix. If we keep into our mind the fundamentals of the variables of marketing mix, uh, I can assure you that we cannot go wrong. And uh, when we relate that uh, with other strategic variables like uh, the mission and everything that flows out of the mission and then taking into consideration these uh, the variables of marketing mix, we complete our strategic process and then arrive at the right positioning for the product or the program. And if we have the right positioning, um, it means that we have taken into consideration the, uh, the point or points of differentiation. And uh, we have the right marketing strategies in terms of positioning and differentiation in place. And uh, having all those uh, the things in place, then the last thing that uh, we must talk about as the part of the marketing planning process is the structure of the organization, meaning who are the people responsible for uh, the carrying out not just the development of this product, but then execution of this uh, program um, day in, day out. Uh, we know there's a committee responsible for the development of the product, and it is a multidisciplinary committee uh, having people from different departments, but having different specializations in marketing, in finance, in supply chain, in IT, and so on and so forth. And then we must also uh, be uh, sensitive to the fact that uh, this uh, committee should phase out and uh, in the process, gonna hand over things to those people responsible uh, for uh, executing the program. Now, once we have all these things in place, I would like to take you back to the financial working, which basically is the cost and revenue model. Based on this working, we have the opportunity of working out the break-even analysis. And it goes without saying, no further emphasis on this particular aspect that break-even analysis is the one that is going to develop a lot of insights into the total development process because it is here that we fully establish, very accurately determine that following are going to be the costs and based on these particular costs, we can recover so much of what we have invested and the remaining portion is the one that we must generate either through generating our own revenues by having kind of a pricing strategy which enables us to generate a certain portion of costs or 
more than cost so that we can be into the profitability zone, all depending upon the pricing objectives. And then we are in a position to um, stay kind of comfortable in terms of our okay, the marketing strategy because okay, we have the numbers and okay, we know the kind of revenue that we are going to generate from uh, sales of our program and what really is the gap and how that gap is going to be filled through donations, through grants, um, individual donations, corporate donations or whatever. We really have a structure of the revenue which enables us to determine all those factors. We do that not only on the basis of the working that I have talked about, but we also add to the whole process the experiential side because we've been into this particular business, so to say, for a long time. And we have a history. We know what it takes to develop new offerings. And uh, with the help of that experience, uh, we can uh, bring about uh, the fine tuning of uh, all the findings um, and the workings of the, uh, the marketing planning that we have right in front of us. Once uh, we have uh, this document ready, now is the time to go ahead with test marketing. What is test marketing? It basically is an attempt to test the reaction of actual target market. It is nothing more than that. Now, here you see the question is, what is the difference between concept testing and market testing? Well, there's a great deal of difference in a way because at the concept testing level, we just test the concept. I am rubbing it again and again that we are just testing the concept at the concept level by developing a questionnaire or a set of questionnaires so that we can extract um, relevant findings from the target audience as to how they will behave. So we uh, try to uh, extract the behavioral patterns out of that uh, research, which is a combination of informal and formal research and uh, uh, are uh, content with our findings at that particular stage. But here, we are talking about market testing. Um, as part of the market testing, in order to get reactions of uh, a section of uh, your total market, you put the, your product or the program on sale. The reason you call it test marketing because you do not really go ahead where the whole market right in front of you and try to conquer it in one go. Uh, this is all I can say in very few explicit words. You move step by step. You do not jump into the water. You put your toes into it because you want to be very sensitive and very careful um, in terms of the possible response of the target market. Now, here the question is, how do you go ahead with that? Uh, especially when you have uh, just uh, one side to uh, the operation. Well, in that particular case, you can be very careful about the volumes that you envisage selling in the very preliminary stage. And that is the stage which you may call a test marketing stage. You do not really publicize uh, your uh, the program like the way uh, you uh, do it uh, when you launch the product. You do it uh, in a very measured way. And uh, you offer the program to a select uh, portion of the target market just in order to uh, see uh, how they react. And then you can uh, make adjustments to the different dimensions of the program, uh, whatever you think certain adjustments are to be brought about to improve the product in order to bring the product up to the level of uh, your target audience. Um, it could be the case where a university offering a new program and they can offer to a very small body of students as an uh, introductory course before they can go full-fledged um, for that particular program, offering um, it to, to a larger section of uh, their target audience. And especially when a university has more than one campus, I think it makes all the more sense to stick to one campus and then see how um, the target audience reacts. 
Same is the case with a hospital that is a one-side hospital. They also have to be very measured in terms of their actions because initiative has got to be limited. And it has to be li limited to a limited section of your target audience. The bottom line here is that uh, you must test the features of the product that you are developing, or rather you have developed, uh, in order to make adjustments and improvements to that particular product in line with expectations of your target audience. And because once you've done that, you're all set to go for the um, wholesome, bigger launch. Now, we are down to the last and the final step of the whole process, which is launching. After we have tested the product by test marketing it, it does not really mean that we move ahead with um, a launch in a wholesome way. It doesn't really mean that we uh, attack all the, the markets of the country in case we are dealing with a social program all at once. No. Even after we have tested the market, we have to move in a very, I would say, measured way. Depending on the experience level of the organization and the level of confidence that the marketing team and the whole organization may have, how aggressive they are, how um, confident they are, and how pragmatic they are, or maybe there is, a, there is an element of um, uh, caution um, because they do not they really want to mess up things. They go ahead with uh, the launching process. In most of the cases, organizations that are uh, the widespread, and especially the ones that are dealing with uh, widespread geographical markets, go for a rollout launch, meaning they go region by region. Uh, the way I was talking about in relation to testing the market, they go even sub-region by sub-region because uh, as they go along a certain line in a measured way, they make adjustments and they gain more experience. And a point comes when they go in a wholesome way. And that is the point where they do not really make big, silly mistakes. And it is for the avoidance of strategic mistakes with which you might commit as the part of the execution process that you must avoid. And the points that we have to keep in mind while we go for a launch are when to launch, where to launch, who to address to begin with, and how to launch. When to launch is all about uh, the timing of launching and a generation of an optimal response. When we talk about timing, there are uh, the certain products or programs that uh, have to be time bound, with the meaning they are related to certain specific uh, time frames. And for example, a university offering a course. It's, uh, it is not that the university can offer any time. It has to be along the program uh, or timeline the which they already have uh, in terms of uh, the starting their semesters or quarters or the annual systems, whatever has been mandated by the regulatory authority. And uh, if it is a question of uh, a hospital with starting a program, um, the hospital they may feel a fairly high level of flexibility in terms of starting uh, that uh, the particular program because uh, it does not bound it to a certain time frame. As a matter of fact, it may be the situation of the sooner, the better. If uh, it is uh, a question of a social program, then I think uh, the less said, the better, because we already have uh, learned uh, all the fundamentals about uh, the rollout launch, and uh, the timing is a function of uh, the uh, practicalities involved in terms of uh, the distribution in particular. And as, as long as uh, we fully appreciate that particular dimension of the strategic process because we are all set with uh, when to launch. The second factor that uh, we have to keep in mind is uh, the where to launch. So this is all about uh, the market that we have to pick up in order to uh, launch the product. And this takes us back to the rollout. And therefore, uh, if we are dealing with um, widely spread geographical market, then we have to pick one particular market where we must kick off and then roll out. Whom to target the launch? This is all about that particular section or sections of your target market 
which you think could be the most promising in terms of giving a good response to your product. And therefore, you've got to be choosy about the launching your programs in terms of those sections that happen to be the most promising. The last one is how to launch. Well, this is all about the communication strategies and everything that is associated with the promotions and communications. You know, you go for advertising campaigns and you go for the posters and you go for all the elements that we have learned as part of the experiential level of brand raising. There are so many different things which we do and interact with our clients and potential clients. And therefore, we have to put all those elements of the experiential level together to decide what is going to be uh, the mechanics of uh, how to launch the program. So therefore, uh, all uh, I can say uh, about launching a new uh, product is that uh, it is a strategic process uh, which starts with uh, developing an idea. And uh, developing an idea uh, is not uh, something which is uh, very poetic. It is something which is very practical as a matter of fact. It is not something magical. It is something which is very closely related to what you're doing and what you have been doing. Uh, it has to be something which is either very closely related to your existing product or something new and yet related to your existing product or even if it happens to be something very different, it still should preferably have some kind of link with your organization and uh, your target audience or the target market. What is the crux here? Well, the crux of the matter is that uh, launching a new product or a program basically is a function of the level of confidence of management and uh, nature of the program, and along with that, structure of the market. So in other words, confidence of the management has to be based on certain rational background. And similarly, the nature of the product is a very good guide as to whether we should roll out or go wholesome. And by the same token, it is the structure of the market which again lets us decide whether we should go market by market or we are dealing with just one market and go big in that particular market. If the management feels extremely confident because it has been launching similar products in the past, and it has all the information and data in place, and uh, all the preparations could have been done in terms of putting together all the requisite strategic resources, then the chances are could launch could, will be successful. This is the stage could, where uh, some phasing out could, has to be done. And I would like to take you back to that particular point could, when he said the committee responsible for developing the program could, has to phase out and the management or the staff members responsible for execution of uh, the program have to phase in because they are the ones now uh, responsible for uh, selling the product and performing uh, the operations of that particular program day in and day out. So they should be the one who must be phased in. So much for uh, the last uh, the step of uh, the strategic uh, the process. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, take you to a very simple graphical presentation that illustrates all that we have learned over the past two components and uh, meaning two subcomponents, which basically are about strategy formulation. Now, this is very interesting that uh, the strategy formulation, although happens to be uh, one of the parts of the strategic process, I would caption this particular flowchart as a strategy formulation flowchart because this is the one that lets us understand the whole process for developing new offerings. As you can see, the whole thing starts with the idea generation and it goes down to idea screening about which we are absolutely clear. And then 
uh, move on to the next stage of concept development. This is an important stage because here could we translate the idea into a workable concept. And could we know that the concept basically is putting together first mentally and then on paper all the features and characteristics of the idea in order to come up with the concept. Once we have developed the concept, we are on to the next stage, which is about testing the concept. And we know very well that testing the concept is research oriented because we are dealing with the segment of the market which will eventually become our market in practical and actual terms. And therefore, we come up with a set of questions that are destined to generate um, accurate and rational responses for us to decide whether the offering that we uh, are going to develop uh, makes sense or not. Uh, what are the improvements that uh, still are to be brought about and uh, what are the adjustments that we need to make? So these are, I would say, the kind of strategic fine-tuning steps that uh, we take at this particular phase. And from there, we move on to a strategy formulation. Strategy formulation is probably one of the most important steps as part of the whole process because it is here that we put together all the underpinnings of our overall marketing strategic process, starting with the mission and right down to the positioning and differentiation of the program. It is here that we make certain changes or strategic adjustments because we are into the strategic process and we have started with the mission of the organization and translate that mission into so many different variables that I talked about as part of the total offer development process. And it is here that we keep developing links within those variables and whenever we realize that we are getting out of step with the process or we are tending to be a little incoherent, we correct ourselves and go back to the concept testing stage, or rather concept development stage, and then test it all over again and then come back to the strategy formulation stage and then make adjustments. So this is one of the uh, stages uh, where uh, we ask ourselves yes or no questions. And uh, this, I think, is uh, a very uh, sensitive uh, stage uh, because uh, it is here uh, where we really uh, finalize our strategy formulation by making or not making adjustments. The chances are that uh, we certainly will make certain adjustments uh, because uh, we have tested the concept, we are uh, making uh, strategies. And all that we are making sure is that all these strategies are linked with each other and they are not out of step with each other. They really flow out of the mission. They really belong to the objective. They really are closely related um, and belong to the purpose of the organization, meaning of a reason for being, why we exist. These are the kind of things if we keep in mind that we will never go wrong with these strategic process. So once we have carried out all these improvements, adjustments, so to say, we are on to the next stage, which certainly is part of the process, but we are carrying out business analysis here. It is here that I talked about things like costs and revenues, and we are in a position to establish the kind of donations or funding that we require in addition to whatever we generate by ourselves. And from there, we move on to the product development and testing stage, real product development, and then testing it at the market stage. And of course, we do not go ahead full blast, because we try to be careful here. And I think a lot has been said about that. And once we are done with that particular step, and we have the results, meaning positive results, hopefully, about the test market or the test marketing process that we go for the full launch. And this is what you can see from this particular graphical illustration. So, so much for development of new offerings. I'm going to talk about um, a component which happens to be the one of the most important part of the whole course. And I think you can well imagine what I'm gonna talk about and that is fundraising. 
Fundraising is uh, probably the most important aspect in the life of a nonprofit organization. They are out to generate funds all the time because this is a challenge that they have to face uh, much harder uh, than their counterparts face uh, on the commercial side. On the commercial side, the managers can generate the revenues by selling more and more of the product. Of course, if the product is successful, but on the other side, the meaning uh, the oversight of nonprofits, we are constrained to generate uh, all that we need by selling our programs or selling our product. So what is the option that a nonprofit has? A nonprofit organization has two options. The one is it generates donations from different sources, and those sources could be individuals, it could be corporations, it could be uh, the other entities like uh, governmental agencies, uh, the foundations, and so on and so forth. And um, a nonprofit organization can generate funds by selling its product. So in other words, to summarize uh, the whole thing, that we can say that there are two options. The one is donations and grants, and the other is generation of revenues. So in other words, a nonprofit organization has two different challenges of being able to generate donations as well as generate sales by selling their products and programs. But then they have the challenge of maintaining the balance between those donations and generation of revenues from the programs. And this is where the overall huge challenge lies, how to maintain that particular balance. So I would say that the nonprofit organizations can have kind of a dual challenge of being able to generate revenues from their programs and generate as much as they can so that they have less and less dependence on donations. And at the same time, they have to make sure that they are in a position to generate donations because they wouldn't like to see uh, layoffs within their organizations only because they cannot maintain the balance by generating the requisite level of donations that they need to fill the gap. The gap could be there if they do not have requisite donations because revenue may not be sufficient. If a nonprofit organization is in a position to generate the 100% of its requirement from service revenues, all the better. But that generally is not the case. Practically, that is not the case, and they have to rely also on donations. So the question here is how much to go for donations and how much organizations should generate from their revenues? Well, I would say that it all depends on the kind of service an organization is into and the level of demand for that particular service and the level of confidence on part of the management of the nonprofit organization as to how much they really can um, sell and generate uh, as their sales and what is the gap uh, for donations. Just to give you one example from the published the US data, 18% of total requirements of nonprofit organizations back in 1993 came from donations and the remaining 72% was generated by their own sales. Now, this is a very impressive and astonishing figure that uh, the nonprofits uh, in the United States uh, do not really depend to a great extent on donations, uh, rather they generate their own funds. And that is why uh, we say there is nothing wrong uh, with generation of uh, their own funds uh, because uh, the organizations have less dependence on donations. Now, talking about this 72% um, of revenue sales, let me tell you that uh, the different kinds of uh, organizations are different classification registered, different levels of uh, the revenues led by uh, the hospitals and religious organizations at uh, the right and top and followed by organizations like uh, the education and uh, the youth development and community development organizations and so on and so forth. There are uh, so many different kinds of uh, the nonprofit organizations, but the ones I've talked about registered uh, high uh, sales in the order that I talked about. So nonprofit organizations do have a chance to generate their own sales. As a matter of fact, it is not only the products that they sell, they also generate money by making certain investments. And they invest into 
look at the different kinds of um, look at the mutual funds and look at the incomes that they generate look at from there uh, they have um, the opportunity to, to to lay their hands on that income to uh, to make further investments and therefore uh, income can be generated from so many different uh, the ways and means many NPOs engage themselves into selling things which are not related to their core programs, just in order to have a higher level of the sales revenues. And they get into things like T-shirts and tea mugs, the different stationary items, just in order to beef up their sales level. Now, to what extent that is practicable and to what extent they really add to their revenues as something which varies from organization to organization. But the fact is that there are so many different ways to generate revenues. Therefore, donations need to be looked into in a little more depth. And that is something that is going to be the topic of another component in which we will discuss the different kinds of donations and how they help uh, non-profit organizations.